Welcome to Unit 2. In today's lecture, we're going to cover HIPAA. HIPAA is a federal law that was put in place in 1996. The purpose of its creation is to create national standards to protect sensitive patient health information from being disclosed without the patient's knowledge. Any and all patient identifiers are covered by HIPAA. Patient identifiers are considered protected health information. Protected health information is any information that can be tied to the patient. For example, say you're aspiring to be a medical scribe to further your medical career. That means every case that you see is likely something very interesting to you. You want to share this cool case with one of your friends, family members, or classmates. It's okay to share the case, but it's very important that you know how to share the case without being in violation of HIPAA. The best way to protect yourself is to just take out all identifiers together. Here's how not to do it. Oh man, there was this old lady. She was like 85 years old. Looked like your grandma, kind of. She came in, her hip was completely out. I mean, it was protruding from her skin. It was scary. The doctor came in, got up on the gurney and asked, hey, scribe, can you make sure I don't fall off the bed? I was like, this is nerve wracking, but it's cool to play an active role. So the entire time that the physician is literally standing over the patient on the gurney, holding their leg, leveraging all of their strength to try to get their hip back in place. Here I am on guard duty to make sure that that doctor doesn't fall off the bed and to get the hip in place. The doc I work with was so frustrated that she didn't get the hip in place, but it was cool to see the consults that she made to be able that to make sure that that 85 year old lady's hip was taken care of. We don't want to do that because we just gave out so many patient identifiers, age, gender, and some information on their appearance. Let's go over how to share the story without violating HIPAA. An elderly woman presented in the ER last night. Her hip completely dislocated. I felt terrible. It was protruding out of place. You could see it was not where it needed to be. What was cool about it was the physician I was working with jumped up on the gurney, supported all the weight of that leg, and was doing everything she could to get it back into place immediately to give the patient relief. I was excited as a medical scribe because although I wasn't directly holding the patient's leg, the physician was asking me to make sure, one, she didn't fall off the bed, and two, to give her different pieces of equipment that she needed to try to reduce the dislocation of the hip. You see the difference there? Nothing I said could possibly give away the identity of the patient. In all, there are 18 different identifiers for protected health information, or PHI. Let's quickly go through them. Names, geographic identifiers, dates, phone numbers, fax numbers, email addresses, social security numbers, medical record numbers, health insurance beneficiary numbers, certificate or license numbers, vehicle identifiers, device identifiers and serial numbers, internet protocol, so IP addresses, the thing every computer has, biometric identifiers, which are things like fingerprints, voice prints, and face identification features, like what's on your iPhone or mini iPhones, speaking of, full face photographic images, and anything comparable. And finally, any unique identifying number, characteristic, code, or something that would be assigned just to one specific individual. Who does HIPAA apply to? Every healthcare provider, health plans, so insurance companies, healthcare clearinghouses. This means hospitals, academic teaching centers, universities, medical schools, PA schools, you get the idea, and business associates are any covered entity. Essentially, business associates are the catch-all for anybody that's non-clinical personnel working within the hospital. So, give you one guess where medical scribing falls in. That's right, we're business associates, which is why HIPAA is so important for this lesson. Why we're learning about HIPAA is, as future healthcare providers, it's critical that we know how to protect our patients and their information. The quickest way to end your medical career before it even starts is to have a HIPAA violation. We'll talk about what those violations mean later in the unit. So we talked about what protected health information falls under HIPAA. We've talked about who needs to follow these HIPAA regulations. Now we're gonna talk about some exceptions where HIPAA doesn't matter. While these aren't as critical to medical scribing, they're beneficial for HIPAA certification and additionally to know later in your medical career. HIPAA doesn't apply when it's required by law, for public health activities, 
victims of abuse or neglect or domestic violence, judicial and administrative proceedings, law enforcement, functions concerning a deceased individual, things like identification, anything that has to do with cadaver activities. So if there's eye or tissue donation going on, or donating the entire cadaver for medicine to better the understandings of future healthcare providers. Research under very specific conditions that we don't need to dive into, essential government functions, and workers' compensation. The first and most important way to prevent HIPAA violations is quality training. Next, any platform you're working on needs to have its data encrypted and vetted for HIPAA security. As an employee, your employer is gonna take care of this for you. However, it's important to know this from an employee standpoint because there's a reason you use very specific platforms for anything that is related to patient care and documentation. Next, making sure that physical copies of records are secure, whether that's by a physical lock and key, a biometric screening like thumbprint, Essentially, making sure that those physical copies are secured and making sure the people that need to access them are only the people that really need the information. Being aware of who you're sharing information with. This brings up, what if you run into somebody you know in the ER? Your takeaway here is, you act like you don't. So let's go to another example. You're working as a medical scribe. I come into the ER as a patient. You see me, I see you. We make eye contact. You know that I know who you are and you know who I am. We leave it at that. Now, if I'm sitting there, we make eye contact and I'm like, hey student, wish I wasn't seeing you in the emergency department, but how have you been? You can then engage with me because I as the patient set the boundary of, hey, I know you know who I am. Let's talk. However, if we run into each other later, don't bring up what happened in the ER unless the patient brings it up first. This can be confusing. Your main takeaway here is act like you don't know the person. If the patient chooses to initiate a conversation, you're welcome to do so, but it needs to be on the patient's terms. Same thing goes for bringing it up later. So we've talked about making sure that we're in a platform that is encrypted first. Second, making sure that physical records are secure. Third, being aware of what information you can share and with who. Let's also talk about some workplace conduct. If you're working in the ER, a common layout is to have a center square, and in the center of the square is medical personnel. And around the center of that square are patient rooms. That means that patients and their family are walking around where clinical personnel are working. This is when it's critical to be aware of the volume of your voice and who can hear you. Because if you're talking loud enough to your coworker, somebody that's immediately outside of that square can hear all the patient information that you're sharing. Same goes for if you're not in the ER and you're just walking down the hallway of an outpatient setting or a hospital sharing information. Be aware of who's around you and the volume of your voice. This happens unintentionally all the time, but it can get you in a lot of trouble. It's good to get in the habit early of making sure you're aware of who you're talking to and who else could hear what you're talking about. And again, you should only be talking to other medical personnel that are directly involved in the patient's case, not gossiping. Last, let's cover improper disposal of written records. As a medical scribe, I often keep a notepad in my pocket so that if I'm not able to access the computer or there's some kind of technical issue, I can still get the information down quickly. It's critical that after I've transferred that information from my notepad into the electronic medical record system that I dispose of those notes properly. And that means putting them in the shredder at work before I leave. Similarly, when I'm working on my computer, I need to make sure that I log out when I walk away from that computer or any notes that I was working on at my workstation are covered when I walk away. So to recap, we need to Use platforms that have encrypted data. Make sure that physical copies of records are secure. Being aware of what information you're sharing and with who. Dispose of any written notes properly. And make sure we have good training. Got that covered. So we've talked about what HIPAA is, who it applies to, and why it exists. Now we need to talk about what happens if HIPAA is violated. Compliance and enforcement. First, fines anywhere from 50 to $250,000. Next, 
prison time. Yeah, prison time. This is serious. You can go up to prison for up to a year just for negligence, meaning you didn't have proper training. If you were maliciously violating HIPAA or sharing protected health information of patients, you can go to prison for up to 10 years. So I don't say this to scare you. I say it so that you're aware of taking this information seriously and knowing that this training is important and why it makes you competitive to be HIPAA certified. Below is the link to become HIPAA certified to set you apart when applying for jobs or your prospective school of choice. As always, I'm here to help. If you have any questions, please leave them below. I want to make sure that you're very clear on protecting patient health information. See you next unit.